Hello, I'm Cullum Coleman, and welcome to Historical Humans Reads, where we take primary sources and bring them to your screen. Today, we will be reading Tablet One of the Epic of Gilgamesh. The Epic of Gilgamesh is considered to be the oldest written story on Earth. It is the recounting of the reign of Gilgamesh, the ancient Sumerian king of Uruk from approximately 4,700 years ago. The translation used for this video is by Maureen Kovacs, and is based on the Akkadian version of the epic, with supplementation by the Old Babylonian version. This translation can be found at ancienttext.org. Link will be in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and would like to hear more excerpts from original texts, be sure to leave a comment down below to let us know what you thought of the video or of any future topics you would like to see. Before we begin, we at Historical Humans would like to provide a trigger warning for our audience, as this work does contain themes of nudity, prostitution, sex, and rape. As such, this video may not be suitable for all viewers. With that, we now begin the Epic of Gilgamesh, Tablet 1. He who has seen everything, I will make known to the lands. I will teach about him who experienced all things alike. Anu granted him the totality of knowledge of all. He saw the secret, discovered the hidden. He brought information of the time before the flood. He went on a distant journey, pushing himself to exhaustion, but then was brought to peace. He carved on a stone stella all of his toils and built the wall of Uruk Haven the wall of the sacred Iana temple, the holy sanctuary. Look at this wall, which gleams like copper. Inspect its inner wall, the likes of which no one can equal. Take hold of the threshold of stone. It dates from ancient times. Go close to the Iana temple, the residence of Ishtar, such as no later king or man ever equaled. Go up on the wall of Uruk, and walk around, examine its foundation, expect its brickwork thoroughly. It is not even the core of the brick structure made of kiln-fired brick, and did not even the seven sages themselves lay out its plans. One league city, one league palm gardens, one league lowlands, the open area of the temple of Ishtar. Three leagues and the open area of Uruk, the wall encloses. Find the copper tablet box. Open of its lock of bronze. Undo the fastening of its secret opening. Take and read out from the lapis lazuli tablet how Gilgamesh went through every hardship. Supreme over other kings, lordly in appearance, he is the hero born of Uruk, the goring wild bull. He walks out in front, the leader, and walks at rear, trusted by his companions, mighty net, protector of his people, raging flood wave who destroys even walls of stone. Offspring of Lugalbanda, Gilgamesh is strong to perfection. Son of the August cow, Rimat Ninsun, Gilgamesh is awesome to perfection. It was he who opened the mountain passes, who dug wells on the flank of the mountain. It was he who crossed the ocean, the vast seas to the rising sun, who explored the world regions seeking life. It was he who reached by his own sheer strength, Untampishtim, the faraway, who restored the sanctuaries that the flood had destroyed. Who can compare with him in kingliness? Who can say like Gilgamesh, I am king? Whose name from the day of his birth was called Gilgamesh? Two thirds of him is God, one third of him human. The great goddess Aruru designed the model for his body. She prepared his form, beautiful, handsomest of men, perfect. He walks around in the enclosure of Uruk, like a wild bull, he makes himself mighty, head raised over others. There is no rival which can raise weapon against him. 
his fellows stand attentive to his orders. And the men of Uruk become anxious. For Gilgamesh does not leave a son to his father. Day and night, he is arrogant. Is Gilgamesh the shepherd of Uruk Haven? Is he the shepherd, bold, eminent, knowing, and wise? Gilgamesh does not leave a girl to her mother, the daughter of the warrior, the bride of the young man. The gods keep hearing their complaints. So the gods of the heavens implored the lord of Uruk. You have indeed brought into being a mighty wild bull head raised. There is no rival who can raise weapon against him. His fellows stand alert, attentive to his orders. Gilgamesh does not leave a son to his father. Day and night he is arrogant. Is he the shepherd of Uruk Haven? Is he their shepherd, bold, eminent, knowing, and wise? Gilgamesh does not leave a girl to her mother, the daughter of the warrior, the bride of the young man. Anu listened to their complaints, and the gods called out to Aruru. It was you, Aruru, who created mankind. Now create a zikru to him. Let it be equal to his stormy heart. Let it be a match for each other so that Uruk may find peace. When Aruru heard that she had created within herself the zikrit of Anu. Aru washed her hands. She pinched off some clay and threw it into the wilderness. In this wilderness, she created the valiant Enkidu, born of silence, endowed with the strength of Ninurta. His whole body was shaggy with hair. He had a head full of hair like a woman. His locks billowed in profusion like Ashnan. He knew neither people nor settled living but wore garment like Sumukan. He ate grasses with the gazelles and jostled at the watering hole with the animals. As with animals, his zirst was slaked with mere water. A notorious trapper came face to face with him opposite the watering hole. On a first, a second, and a third day, he came face to face with him opposite the watering hole. On seeing him, the trapper's face went stark with fear. And Enkidu and his animals drew back home. He was rigid with fear, though stock still. His heart pounded and his face drained of color. He was miserable to the core. And his face looked like one who had made a long journey. The trapper addressed his father, saying, Father, a certain fellow has come from the mountains. He is the mightiest in the land. His strength is as mighty as a meteorite of Anu. He continually goes over the mountains. He continually jostles at the watering place with the animals. He continually plants his feet opposite the watering place. I was afraid, so I did not go up to him. He filled in the pits that I had dug, wrenched out my traps that I had spread, released from my grasp the wild animals, he does not let me make my rounds in the wilderness. The trapper's father spoke to him, saying, My son, there lives in Uruk a certain Gilgamesh. There is no one stronger than he. He is as strong as a meteorite of Anu. Go, set off to Uruk. Tell Gilgamesh of this man of might. He will give you the harlot Shamat. Take her with you. The woman will overcome the fellow as if she were strong. When the animals are drinking at the water place, have her take off her robe and expose her sex. When he sees her, he will draw near to her, and his animals, who grew up in his wilderness, will be alien to him. He heeded his father's advice. The trapper went off to Uruk, he made the journey, stood inside of Uruk, and declared to Gilgamesh, There is a certain fellow who has come from the mountains, he is the mightiest in the land. His strength is as mighty as a meteorite of Anu. He continually goes over the mountains. He continually jostles at the watering place with the animals. He continually plants his feet opposite the watering place. I was afraid, so I did not go up to him. He filled in the pits that I had dug, wrenched out the traps that I had spread, 
released from my grasp the wild animals. He does not let me make my rounds in the wilderness. Gilgamesh said to the trapper, go trapper, bring the harlot Shamhat with you. When the animals are drinking at the watering place, have her take off her robe and expose her sex. When he sees her, he will draw near to her and his animals who grew up in the wilderness will be alien to him. The trapper went, bringing the harlot Shamhat with him. They set off on the journey, making direct way. On the third day, they arrived at the appointed place and the trapper and the harlot sat down at their posts. A first day and a second day, they sat opposite the watering hole. The animals arrived and drank at the watering hole. The wild beasts arrived and slank their thirst with water. Then he, Enkidu, offspring of the mountains, who eats grasses with the gazelles, came to drink at the watering hole with the animals. With the wild beasts, he slaked his thirst with water. Then Shamhat saw him, a primitive, savage fellow from the depths of the wilderness. That is he, Shamhat. Release your clenched arms. Expose your sex so that he can take in your voluptuousness. Do not be restrained. Take his energy. When he sees you, he will draw near to you. Spread out your robe so he can lie upon you and perform for this primitive the task of womankind. His animals grew up in the wilderness, will become alien to him, and his lust will groan over you. Shamhat unclenched her bosom, exposed her sex, and he took in her voluptuousness. She was not restrained, but took his energy. She spread out her robe, and he lay upon her. She performed for the primitive the task of womankind. His lust groaned over her. For six days and seven nights, Enkidu stayed aroused and had intercourse with the harlot until he was sated with her charms. But when he turned his attention to his animals, the gazelles saw Enkidu and darted off. The wild animals distanced themselves from his body. Enkidu, his utterly depleted body, his knees that wanted to go off with the animals went rigid. Enkidu was diminished, his running not as before. But then he drew himself up, for his understanding had broadened. Turning around, he sat down at the harlot's feet, gazing at her face, his ears attentive as the harlot spoke. The harlot said to Enkidu, You are beautiful, Enkidu. You are become like a god. Why do you gallop around the wilderness with the wild beasts? Come, let me bring you into Uruk Haven, to the holy temple, the residence of Anu and Ishtar, the place of Gilgamesh, who is wise to perfection, but who struts his power over the people like a wild bull. What she kept saying found favor with him. Becoming aware of himself, he sought a friend. Enkidu spoke to the harlot. Come, Shamhat, take me away with you to the sacred holy temple, the residence of Anu and Ishtar, the place of Gilgamesh, who is wise to perfection, but who struts his power over the people like a wild bull. I will challenge him. Let me shout in Uruk, I am the mighty one. Let me in and I will change the order of things. He whose strength is mightiest is the one born in the wilderness. Shamhat spoke to Enkidu. Come, let us go so he may see your face. I will lead you to Gilgamesh. I know where he will be. Look about Enkidu inside Uruk Haven, where the people show off in skirted finery and where every day is a day for some festival where the lyre and drum play continually, where the harlots stand about prettily, exuding voluptuousness full of laughter. And on the couch of night, the sheets are spread. And Kidu, you do not know how to live. I will show you Gilgamesh, a man of extreme feelings. Look at him, gaze at his face. He is a handsome youth with freshness. His entire body exudes voluptuousness he has a mightier strength than you. Without sleeping day or night, Enkidu, it is your wrong thoughts you must change. It is Gilgamesh whom Shamhat loves, and Anu, and Enlil, and La, 
have enlarged his mind. Even before you came from the mountain, Gilgamesh and Uruk had dreams about you. Gilgamesh had got up and revealed the dream, saying to his mother, Mother, I had a dream last night. Stars of the sky appeared, and some kind of meteorite of Anu fell next to me. I tried to lift it, but it was too mighty for me. I tried to turn it over, but I could not budge it. The land of Uruk was standing around it. The whole land had assembled around it. The populace was thronging around it. The men clustered about it and kissed its feet as if it were a little baby. I loved it and embraced it as my wife. I laid it down at your feet and you made it compete with me. The, mug, the mother of Gilgamesh, the wise, all-knowing, said to her lord, Ramat Ninsun, the wise, all-knowing, said to Gilgamesh, As for the stars in the sky that appeared, and the meteorite of Anu which fell next to you, you tried to lift it, but was too mighty for you. You tried to turn it over, but were unable to budge it. You laid it down at my feet, and I made it compete with you. And you loved and embraced it as a wife. There will come to you a mighty man, a comrade who saves his friend. He is the mightiest in the land. He is the strongest. His strength is as mighty as the meteorite of Anu. You loved him and embraced him as a wife. And it is he who will repeatedly save you. Your dream is good and propitious. A second time, Gilgamesh said to his mother, Mother, I have had another dream. At the gate of my marital chamber, there lay an axe, and the people had collected about it. The land of Uruk was standing around it. The whole land had assembled about it. The populace was thronging around it. I laid it down at your feet. I loved it and embraced it as a wife, and you made it compete with me. The mother of Gilgamesh, wise all-knowing, said to her son, Rimat Nunsun, the wise all-knowing, said to Gilgamesh, the axe that you saw is a man. You love him and embrace him as a wife, but I have him compete with you. There will come a mighty man, a comrade who saves his friend. He is the mightiest in the land. He is the strongest. He is as mighty as the meteorite of Anu. Gilgamesh spoke to his mother, saying, By the command of Enlil, the great counselor, so may it pass. May I have a friend and advisor. A friend and advisor may I have. You have interpreted for me the dreams about him. After the harlot recounted the dreams of Gilgamesh to Enkidu, the two of them made love. That is the first tablet of the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, if you would like to hear more of this Epic of Gilgamesh, please do leave a comment down below. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel for access to more content. Uh, we can be found on YouTube and Spotify as Historical Humans and on Facebook as, hum as Humans of History. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed.